power on. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Connected. On today's episode, I'm taking a look at the Shockwave audio system for the RG1DX by Rurock. Just a couple of performance specs to start with, charging time of two and a half hours and a listening time of seven to eight hours. Uh, on my commute, I use it for about 10 to 15 minutes per day and I've been using it for just over a week and I haven't had to charge it yet. So I really feel like that listening time is probably a pretty good estimate. At the time of filming this, the current price for the Shockwave system is $120. In the box, what you get is the instructions on how to pair it and what the buttons do, the shockwave itself, and a micro USB to charge it. Pairing the shockwave is super simple. You press and hold the power button for three seconds and it enters the pairing mode. Pairing. You find the shockwave on your cell phone or whatever device it is that you're connecting it to, and that's it. There's no passcode or anything to enter, it just connects. Connected. Removal of the existing headliner is very simple. There's two poppers, one on either side. Once you release the first one, you just peel off the Velcro from the back until you get to the other side and then release the other popper. Here's the two of them side by side, not much difference. Uh, on the shockwave system, you can see some function buttons on the sides that I'll get to a little bit later. Um, but other than that, the only difference is of course, just the actual speakers themselves. Now feeding it into the helmet is pretty simple as well. Just line up where the first popper goes and then you kind of just feed the shockwave through. And then once you get to the other side, um, you'll match up where that popper goes and then kind of just readjust the existing Velcro strip there to make sure everything sits flush. The placement of the speakers is probably the most important part to making sure that you're gonna get the best sound quality out of your shockwave system. There's a lot of space to move up and down, kind of back and forth as well, just to make sure that it's going to fit precisely where your ear is, so that way you're going to get the best quality possible out of this system. On the back side under the zipper you have the charging port as well as the power button and the play and pause button. On the right side of the helmet you have your skip, volume up, and answer call button, and on the left side you have your reverse, volume down, and end call button. To activate your phone's assistant, you press and hold both of them for two to three seconds and it turns that feature on your phone. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is what I'm sure you guys are most curious about and that's the quality of these headphones. For $120, I had a pretty high expectation on what they were going to sound like and I wouldn't say I was disappointed, but they also don't sound like $120 headphones. Um, at high volumes, they don't distort, so that is definitely a positive thing, but you're just not getting the low end out of it that you would with over-the-ear headphones or in-ear headphones. And you can't really be too mad about it because for what it is, they're not really designed to give you the most amount of bass. So as far as quality goes, what you get for $120, in my opinion, doesn't really matter because you can listen to music. Uh, I couldn't find a way to make it work with ear pods or earbuds or anything like that with this helmet and so by having the shockwave it allows me to listen to music again and so for me that's definitely worth 120 dollars all right so i think that's a wrap for this video today uh, i hope it was helpful if it was please hit that button if you guys have any questions that i didn't get answered in this video just leave them in the comments below if you haven't already become a subscriber i would love to have you guys on board and as always i'll see you guys next time